It's hot. Mm. Yeah, it is. It is oppressively hot. Last Not the only that. Honestly, it's like 50 here. Last I checked, it is 90% humidity here. Oof. Yeah, I was sleeping in soup earlier today. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah. It's not a good time. I don't recommend it. Uh, yeah. Dry, dry heat is supposedly the one you want because it makes you sweat, and the sweat uh, d- does the thing where it goes away. This is what heat does to you, kids. You want... Don't don't be dehydrated. Drink. This has been a PSA. Hmm. Yeah, I. I went to bed. I woke up two hours later, for the desperate need to drink like two liters of water, just chugging it. Not even joking. Mm. It was bad times. And then I took a cold shower because that seemed like a really good idea. Oh, boy. We have had basically no hot weather here. We we got typical summer weather, I guess, for for England, I suppose. Um, which was like, oh, it's kind of hot. I turned my fan on. It's, like, it's fine. It's tolerable. Uh, and that was all we got until September, like, 3rd. And then suddenly it all just came crashing down at once. It's been bad. That's pretty brutal. So yeah, that uh, it's been less than pleasant. Uh, yeah. Somehow I've gotten work done despite that. I don't really know how that works, but you know that's cool. Apparently, it does work. No, it doesn't. You're lying. I, I refuse to exist in in this despite it meaning me getting shit done so you know it doesn't make me get shit done it's entirely it's anomalous it's in incongruous it's um there there it's is no correlation out. that's it that's the correlation that was the word I was going for yeah there's no it's not the same it's different reasons. <laughs> So how's everybody doing? We doing good? Yeah. Not better than that. Yeah. <laughs> How do you say, sir? Uh, doing good. Uh, it's uh, it's starting to cool down here. So you know, most days it's like, you know, jacket weather when I leave for work. Oh, that sounds nice. It is uh, it is enjoyable in its own way. Although it is, it is actually getting a little uncomfortable. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta start actually like taking my jacket with me. So I get outside, and then I'm too cold. Anyway, mm. uh, yeah, uh, I, I, watched... I have so much sympathy for you as a river yeah. runs down my back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, we had a we had a, a heat wave like two weeks ago. That uh, it was like walking through boiling water. It sucked. Yeah. being outside bad times feel my health bar going down it's not mm-hmm. good but uh i watched uh sharknado 2 because i just i noticed that two through five were free on prime instead of because like you have to pay for the first one for some fucking reason you know, the first one so has just, the name recognition and it, it's like jaws no one cares about jaws 2 ah yeah that's fair I assume it's probably a similar situation. Jaws 1 is for sale, and you have to rent or buy it, and then mm. Jaws 2, you can just watch it. Maybe yeah. watch it with ads. No one wants but, to watch uh, Jaws 2, and Jaws 4 is just more like watching a nature documentary on filmmakers and actors. Like, Michael Caine is in that shit. Hmm. That is a film where a shark follows a plane across, I think it was the Atlantic Ocean... So that it can kill some of the people that were on board the plane. Michael Caine is an, <laughs> in that movie. I'll have to look up who that is. I recognize the name, but I just Michael I'm Caine, not uh, to the Muppet Christmas Carol, fucking Alfred from the Batman Dark Knight trilogy. Oh, him. yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. He yeah. was in Jaws Four. What the fuck? 
What the fuck? The Revenge. Sorry. Jaws 4, The Revenge. <laughs> Jaws 4, I... the, the, the Land Shark. I mean, the subtitle for Sharknado 2 is It Happened Again. <laughs> and the third one is Oh Hell No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thing is, for for Sharknado, that is entirely appropriate. Like, <laughs> that's reasonable. Like, it happened again. We're as baffled as you are. <laughs> there was... Okay, I remember, I haven't read this, but I saw there was a manga that was um, isekai, but it's like... Like a sh- like all of the shark movie tropes in one shark gets summoned over to another world as a summon, and it's <laughs> okay. just Sharknado and Jaws and everything, and uh, Deep Blue Sea and all the other ones. Yeah, <laughs> it's so, been a surprising uh, amount of shark movies. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm actually surprised the first one is for sale and the others aren't because like the appeal of Sharknado is because. It's just fucking dumb. It's so dumb and outlandish. Hmm. And they only get more dumb and more outlandish based on the second movie and the uh, the previews of the uh, third one I've seen. So you'd think the selling point would be stronger the more further you get into the series. Well, the novelty value kind of wears out after the first one, I would assume, uh, yeah. like to an extent. That's Killer, a fair point. It's, it's like... In the world. It's like Saints Row. Like, you had Saints Row, and that was all, you know, standard gangster tropes, and no one liked it. And then Saints Row 2, and it got a little bit ridiculous, and that's cool. And Saints Row 3 got more ridiculous, and it was like, okay, that's... I don't know about this. And then 4, everyone's really, like... It's very polarizing, because it got so ridiculous. Like, a lot yeah, of people hate it. And a lot of, some people appreciate it, but a lot of people hate it. Didn't that studio close their doors recently? <clears throat> yep. The reboot did really, really, really badly. They kind of mm. deserved it after that reboot. That was just terrible. Mm. From from the ground up, it was just shit. Yeah. You, you know what we want from the series about gangsters that were just effortlessly cool and very likable? We want hipster douchebags that are in setting complete fucking losers from start to finish I didn't even follow the reboot or what it was about but hearing that makes me sad yeah they tried to go for like a everyone is hip and inclusive and trendy and PC and it didn't work well with the series that like offends everyone that's the point Uh, everything is caricatures one of them is a super straight-laced guy who wears a bow tie and talks about finance all the time and also talks about how he doesn't want to be... Uh, uh, a lot of people are boring and he doesn't want to be one of the boring people, he says, while being the most boring person. <laughs> it would be Ooh, funny if that. it was intentional. <laughs> oh, that's depressing. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not surprised to hear that they uh, shuttered. Mm. It doesn't take much these days for a big studio to just die. That and that's one of them. That reboot was a make or break for them. They had literally nothing else. No one cares about Red Faction anymore. Uh, Agents of Mayhem was their attempt to come back after Get Out of Hell, the expansion oh. thing they did for Saints Row Four. Uh, that also didn't do very well. They had absolutely nothing in the tank. They had no cultural cash. Nope. If they didn't put something out that was at least good, this was inevitable. So... That makes sense. I probably would have played a Red Faction game, is the thing. Like, I was never the biggest fan of the series, but it's more because, I don't know, something you play and then you enjoy and then you don't really think about yeah i mean i i played the first i played the first two to completion the first one was it, it was the um 
It was basically a first-person shooter of the old-school model, where it's just you against all of the things that are in the place that you are. Um, but it had destructible environments that would neat. Um, and then the second one was trying to get in on the whole, hey, we're a tough guy squad of tough guys, and we're the destructible environment is kind of a thing, I guess, but we're really more just doing a dude-bro shooter of military stuff kind of thing. Uh, and then the third one was... Uh, the third one actually did something interesting because it went really hard on the destructible environments, so every building in the game you could just bash right through there were giant robot things that you could, you know, pilot and smash through buildings. Everything was explosive. There were a lot of neat things in Red Faction Guerrilla, but uh, it uh, mm. not much incentive to actually play it <laughs> once you, uh -huh. once you have an hour or two of the big explosions and smashing through buildings. It didn't feel like there was much more to it. <clears throat> That's a shame. I feel like there was a fourth one. But the fact that I only feel like there was a fourth one tells you ex everything you need to know if there was a fourth one. Yeah. Uh, eh, nothing wrong with an unenjoyable, kind of shallow experience, I suppose. I don't mind that too much. Yeah. I mean, it was it, Gorilla was an open world game in let let's say the start of the glut of the open world games. It it was very much following that Far Cry Three model. Uh only less interesting. <clears throat> yeah. So, you know. uh, yeah. So they leaned pretty hard on Saints Row from that point and uh, went pretty well for a while. Yeah. I mean, two and three were pretty good, too, especially. I mean, that seems like everyone loved Saints Row 2. I had a discussion about this recently, and my, my personal conclusion was two was the best in terms of story, Four was just weird and out there, but in a really interesting way. Um, like, it was stupid and felt very not Saints Row, but it felt interesting in its own right, so I give it a pass. Um, mm -hmm. And three was the best in terms of gameplay. Like, actually, playing three feels so much better than playing two. It does, yeah. it. <clears throat> I can definitely agree with that. Three had some infuriating story beats but like playing it was fun and that's honestly what kept me going mm. so. I do appreciate the evolution into 4 though where like you're playing in the same area so it makes sense to give the player super speed and the ability to jump and like mobility options to get through it yeah ex ex it's, it's the same area because they didn't have the resources to make a new one um, but they have you traverse it and experience it in a new way. Like, all that shit on the ground, the vehicles and the shooting and stuff, no one cares. You've, you've done that already. So, fuck it. Leap across fucking city blocks in a single jump. Go for it. Go wild. Spend and all fight throwing energy blasts at people and dropping on them from a skyscraper height to make a big explosion. You yeah, know? That, that shit was cool. It was a new and interesting way to play the game. Story was bafflingly dumb, of course, but you know yeah. the gameplay was fun. Mm. Also, I do, I do appreciate the choice at the very beginning of the game. Was it cure hunger or fuck cancer or something? Yeah, something like that. Mm. That was pretty fun. Yeah, it. Yeah, you you could see what was happening as 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 those games went on, like two was still fairly serious for the most part. There, there was some goofy shit, but the story was took itself pretty fucking seriously. The Sons of Sandy were wonky, but um, like the Ronin storyline still really holds up, in my opinion, as does the Brotherhood. Both are very dark. <laughs> um, one darker than the other, and I, I feel like those still really hold up, but... Uh, then three, there are bits of three that felt more like two in terms of the storytelling. 
they really balanced between okay, this is fairly realistic and follows a train of logic, and then it just goes balls to the wall, dumb crazy. Yeah. Basically, by the point you deal with the actual syndicate boss, who is a very serious straight laced guy, the second he exits stage left with a bullet through its through his head or whatever happened to him, I don't actually remember. Um, that's it. That was the seriousness gone. The next thing that happens is one of the twins gets a neck snapped by a luchador, and we're just going wacky. We're having uh, pony races with gimps in fucking down the streets of the city and there is a genetically modified modified super soldier uh you go into a virtual reality where you get turned into a toilet yeah yep and then just for like split seconds it occasionally goes back to the serious tone. You you, you get a real um, identity crisis vibe from three, because like about the halfway point, you get the real villain of the piece, which is you know government military dude who's moving in to you know deal with gang violence and stuff with overwhelming firepower. <clears throat> And you get his which motivation. How, <laughs> Sorry? Which is how 2 goes. So they did follow that one as well. I mean, yeah. they, they kind of followed the same trend. Well, at 2, it was the fucking clothing brand, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, whatever the corporation yeah, was that it was kind of moves in and takes over. It wasn't Ultor, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, so it wasn't military. It was definitely Corpo. But it's same general vibe. Yeah. Ultor were the villains of Red Faction, by the way. Um, <clears throat> oh. Yeah. Huh. So, so the implication is like four hundred years or whatever in the future, then Altor becomes, you know, a gigantic mega corporation that enslaves miners on Mars and such things. Um, but yeah, in in three, the villain's motivation was, you remember some of that really really heinous shit you did in two. <laughs> uh, yeah, one of one of the people you did really really heinous shit to was this dude's daughter. Um, and that's his motivation. And that's a really good motivation. Um, it would really work if this were anything like two. <laughs> it's not, though. Like, yeah. I, I feel like not long after that reveal, you're fighting zombies at the behest of Burt Reynolds, the mayor. So, you know. Oh, God, I forgot that happens. Yep. I forgot that was the same game. wild yep <sighs> uh i haven't really done much else this week honestly um i went to a comedy show last night uh brave new workshop mm. uh, fantastic group of people very fun cool uh so uh so my housemates were going as like a kind of a belated anniversary date kind of thing i believe oh. and uh they invited me and my girlfriend to kind of last minute and then offered to pay for the tickets so like why not yeah the only thing we had planned for the evening was to make some uh, like sweet and sour chicken, I guess, from scratch, uh, which we're doing today. So yeah. easy to move around. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that was fun. Uh, if you're in the Minneapolis area, by all means, look them up because they're very funny. It was their 65th anniversary show. So, like, they've been going for a while. Hmm. And uh, let's see. Watched a few anime, nothing of note. Uh, I did finally get a chance to watch uh, Saving Up 80,000 Gold in Another World for My Retirement, which was really good. Uh, Isekai, obviously, uh, main character has teleportation powers. Not, I don't think she can teleport for, like, sight. It's just between worlds. So she's mostly just using, like, I'm going to get some really cheap goods from the modern world and sell them in the fantasy world and make a bunch of money because the gold is worth a lot more. So very enjoyable. Mm. I've been told it gets uh, it gets pretty pretty crazy in the manga later, uh, but I so I don't know what the anime covers. But it's been it's been fun. I'm like halfway through, I think six or seven episodes. Uh, played more Rem two. Still okay. I'm currently downloading Baldur's Gate three. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two days ago. Rem two. Uh, Remnant two. Oh, okay. Yeah, I believe I talked about that like two weeks ago or something like that. But uh, it's a game, third person shooter, Dark Souls with guns. Uh, very difficult, very de strongly designed around multiplayer. So your skill points are capped. Your guns can only get so powerful. And bosses have a billion ads. Mm. So that's fun. It's fun to play, but man, if you play on anything but the easiest difficulty solo play, it's it's brutal. But uh, yeah, I think that's me. Honestly, it's been a slow, Sorry, fast, you, rather week. You were talking about uh, Baldur's Gate 3, and I interrupted you to figure out what the other thing you were mentioned was. Oh, uh, just that I bought it. It's downloading right now. Oh, cool. Yeah, very so nice. I will, be, I will be able to talk about that more next week. Everyone playing that game but me. <laughs> you can play it, you know. I could. Okay. I could do one of the dozen other things that I also want to do. <laughs> I'm not nice. doing those either. So, you know. Well, they've released a few more hot fixes since I last checked in on it. Yeah, I've been told the computer had a performance patch like a week ago. It had a huge performance patch, and then it also got um, a few more hot fixes on some things, but... Even then, uh, my PC be chugging uh, still, so yeah. I might I might just pick it up on PS Five. Mm. Uh, That's what I'm getting for, it on. So, just for the better, smoother experience. Though I'm still gonna keep, you know, obviously like I want to keep playing a little bit on PC, but PC is really good because all my friends have it on PC, so I can play with them easier. Also mods. Uh, yeah. It, also it, mods. It already has a decent mod community. Good for them. So yeah. Granted, um, it's it's a bad time to be designing mods when it's in like hotfix period, but you know. They're regularly patching and updating it, so Yeah, that that's the yeah, that is how you break mods. So mm -hmm. uh, people should probably hold off for a little bit, but you know, enthusiasm is what it is. Yeah. So, uh for my week, I uh was called by a, a charter school um, because somebody was uh, a teacher that I've subbed for a lot was uh, works with my mom was uh, t talking me up to them and uh, I have submitted a cover and a resume that I might be interviewed for a third grade teaching position um, in the upcoming week hmm, nice hmm. so that's pretty cool yeah uh, and on top of that, uh, like aside from that, I've just been working on um, other things. Uh, uh, I got myself some stuff that I have to do for the credential and everything. Because um, I don't f fully have the teaching credential yet. Um, but some, but charter schools and other things like private schools and such, you don't really need one. So, hmm? see how that goes. That that is quite possibly the most baffling thing I've heard in a while. You have a master's degree in teaching, teaching. or teaching adjacent. Yeah, teaching. So ha So the credential requires you to like um you have to you have to um do this separate thing called the in California the Cal TPA, right? Where you have to record a lesson and then you have to um essentially uh, write, write, do a whole lot of writing about what you did, how you differentiate it for your students, right? But the big focus on it in the differentiation is how did you differentiate for your students who are, you know, very diverse. And the class that I was assigned when I was student teaching um, had like a very not diverse class. Mm -hmm. Like I had an English learner who, after I finished teaching my lessons, stopped being an English learner because his, he was so fluent. So uh, I got held up on uh, finishing those Cal the Cal TPAs, and I'm still done with them, because uh, I have to now lie and make up fake kids who have worse problems so that I can make up solutions for them. That because, sounds incredibly dumb. Yes. They're that, thinking of getting rid of this uh, part of the teaching credentialing process. That would be a good idea. That sounds like the worst kind of credentialing that is used as an excuse for why credentialing 
as a whole is bad, just like any qualifications. Mm-hmm. That's that's it's, a shame. It's frustrating, and uh, so I'm. I have that I'm working on and trying to get that all sorted. Uh, aside from that, uh, I have done back to back weeks of like intense D and D prep for my games. So, um, in one of my in one of my D and D games, I DM for uh, three of my players died. Right? Oh shit! Um, it is meant to be a difficult encounter, and they did some baffling things. Uh, did not quite work together well as a team. Um, one player was really insistent on using the ladder from their robe of items to just so somebody could walk, step up to it and use fireball, but there was no problem that needed to be solved with a ladder. So just kind of wasted the turn getting that all set up and then um, they all got murderified. Um, but three of the five members managed to escape. So what I decided to do was um, I designed the afterlife um, and I split the session. So I had three players trying to escape from the monster that they lost to who's chasing them. And I have three players in the afterlife who are, you know, in their, essentially their Valhalla. Right? Because um, okay. the god in the setting is a god of war. Um, and it's, 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 I basically made a roguelike mode where you get things called slayer points depending on how much of these uh, conceptual threats or like existential monsters that you fight and kill. Um, if you die, it's no problem. You just respawn back at base fully healed. So kill as many as you can before you die, essentially. Mm. And they got they got new character sheets and they get a chance to like try out new character builds, essentially, and do like oh. a combat with zero stakes, but getting points so they can buy per so they can buy upgrades like a roguelike. So they're incentivized to be smart about it as opposed to just like just throwing themselves into an enemy, essentially. Yeah, you, you only get more points, yes. Uh, the, the stronger the enemy, the more points they get. And the longer they survive, the more strong the more the stronger enemies come out as wave after wave after wave comes. Yeah, makes sense. And so that was fun. I got to show like defeated enemies from like a past past campaigns showing up and they've been rehabilitated. Um, <laughs> in the afterlife, one of them being like the boss of one arc is now running the store as like the assistant, actually, not even fully running it, and he's just all chill now. So I was having fun with that. I also learned how to uh, we use Roll Twenty as the virtual uh, tabletop, you know, set uh, system that we use, mm. and I figured out how to mod it with a. a um, some installing like new APIs and uh, macros into it. So now it's really convenient. I can just hit a button and all these enemies just instantly have their initiative rolled. I don't have to go through each sheet and then click initiative roll, initiative roll. Hmm. Select the token, initiative roll. Uh, there's now like buttons on the screen. They can just, players can click a click their token, click that button, instant stealth roll, instant perception check, you know, instant initiative roll. Uh, saving throw, all sorts of good stuff. Super that convenient. Really Saves a lot of time when like trying to run combat, especially when you have I mean, a game just with the six initiative players. Initiative roll in it. alone is yeah. incredible. Yeah, I'm like I could not run a combat system in which you have wave after wave of enemy coming after you if I had to take like five minutes to roll each initiative for them. Instead, it takes two seconds. Excited about that. Um, and I got sent, a friend has uh, sent me uh, what what she calls the um, the mecha common core of anime that I must watch. Okay. And I am, there's some already on there that I've seen, but it's like, these are the, these are the big ones that you should watch if you want to like understand everything mecha. The big mecha shows. Okay. So I'm assuming... Code Guys. Yep. Uh, Gurren Logan. Yep. Uh, Gundam Wing. Uh, Gundam Wing was not on there. It was Mobile Suit Gundam, Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam, Mobile Suit Gundam ZZ, Mobile Suit Gundam Char's Counterattack, um, then like Getter Robo, Mazinger Z, uh, Ava's on there. 
Um, anyway, yeah. Super Dimension Fortress Maycross, the King of Braves, Gal Gygar, Pat Labor, Gunbuster, and Armored Trooper Votoms. Make us XLR better be on that fucking list. It, was. it wasn't on there. I've already seen it. Oh, watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> Six dig giant robots. Exactly. So. <laughs> I'm going to be going through, I guess, the Mecha Common Core and trying to. Like, I love Mecha stuff, but I don't actually <laughs> actively watch or follow it. Um, this will be a good time to rectify it. I also want to pick up Armored Core as soon as possible. Mm. Because, man, <clears throat> I like giant robots. Mm. I like them as a backdrop for actual stories. <laughs> Like, hmm. See, I love story, but I also love giant robot go punch do big bang boom. Yeah, it makes my monkey brain I, happy. I I tried with Gundam. I did. Uh, well, I'm gonna be watching the original Gundam. Oh, forty. Yeah, that's gonna be an experience. And I'm oh, going to see... Uh, was yeah. Zone of the Enders not on there? Uh, Zone of the Enders was not on there. This is just like anime stuff. Hmm. Well, is there Zone of the Enders anime? Is... Yeah, we watched it. Oh. Oh, we watched the... Yeah, we watched the first episode of that. Right. Hmm. I, I always keep thinking of it as a game. Yeah. Because wasn't it a game that got an anime adaptation? Wasn't I that how it went? I believe so, yeah. I think so. Hmm. Yeah, so, you know, did that, um, and been a pretty, pretty okay, uh, week, all things considered, haven't done anything remarkable, but, you know, that's how it is. But, I want to say thank you to our patrons. Uh, could, could I maybe say my stuff? <laughs> <laughs> all right right um, I, I i kept thinking you had gone already no i mean i ranted about saints row for about 20 minutes but you know it's not it was my, my week all right go ahead tell uh, us um you're on the spot on the pedestal do it come on oh, do it, tell do us. it. <laughs> uh let me just open steam to see if i played anything on steam maybe <laughs> Uh, nope. <laughs> this is going less well than I thought it was. I I, I could have sworn I did something this week. Uh, if you actually need more time, there was a big thing I spent most of my week doing. I forgot about. Okay. Uh, I binge watched all of season one and two of Good Omens. Okay. Fully, fully recommend that show. It's fantastic. Uh. I, show I, is basically I saw about... clips about the trolley problem episode. Uh, I actually don't know what episode that is. Uh, guy who is completely indecisive. That kind of sums up one of the characters that doesn't narrow it down. <laughs> oh. So it's about uh, Angel and a Demon uh, just basically interacting with interacting with oh, each other over over that's, centuries that's the neil gaiman one right yes yeah yes i remember that uh okay. like the de the demon uh crowley or crawley at first he re renames himself pretty quick uh he's actually the serpent from the garden of eden it's supposed to be crowley but yeah okay <laughs> but, you know that's just it's me being a nitpicky that's I fair to be it's, uh it's so my he's thing. He's the serpent, and the angel character is the uh, guardian of the east gate of Eden as well. So, uh, yeah, it's just them interacting and fun stuff happens. I don't want to spoil anything else because it's honestly a really fun show to watch. It's on uh, uh, Prime Video. And I'm sure, you know, other places as well. But that is the official way that I watched it since I already have access to that. Uh, we, uh, housemates and I also binge watched, I think a couple weeks ago, the, uh, American gods as well. I'm not sure if I ever mentioned that one, uh, but, uh, 
Yes, I believe you did, because how the fuck else would I know about it if you hadn't? <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. But uh, also a fantastic show. It's, it's just, It follows a similar vein of, like, if something is mentioned or shown or or the camera focuses on it for just a little little bit longer than you'd think, it's probably relevant. It, everything is intentional in a way that, you know, rewards you for paying attention. And that is, uh, that's always really nice. Mm -hmm. Compared to shows where it's just like, you don't ever ask questions because none of it matters. Yeah. Okay, that was me. Uh, Casey, you remembered what you did? Nope. Oh, all right. <laughs> I stalled uh, as long as I could. Sorry. I mean, I've been miserable with the heat and shit. Oh, that's why you thought it, I was done, because I wouldn't shut up about the heat for another ten minutes. Yeah, that's fair enough, actually. Yeah, that makes sense. I mm. thought the heat was your week. <laughs> it effectively was. I mean, I'm not going to, like, bullshit. I think yeah. we've all been there. Like, uh, if it was, that's not a bad thing. Well, I'm sure it was very unpleasant. Yeah, um... I have been, like, failing... Like, you know the ADD thing of just, like, you can't focus and do the thing you really should do, and you know you should do it. You would really benefit from doing it. Mm -hmm. You don't do it anyway, cause... yeah. because... Because. Yep. Uh, that, that's, that's been me with defrosting my freezer. One of the drawers straight up won't open anymore for being so frozen over. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I have been putting off... I've been putting off both buying a fresh delivery of groceries to, to stock up the fridge because my brain has decided if I'm going to defrost the freezer, that means I need to turn off the fridge freezer, which means if I do that and I have a stock of groceries in, in the fridge, then that might ruin the, the, the stuff in the fridge. Maybe I could probably look this up, but I won't because I don't want to do it. So... <laughs> So I've sort of paralyzed myself into not buying real food, not defrosting the freezer, and eating takeout for the past several days. <laughs> oh, that that's just the worst of every situation. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Wow. It's, it's, it's super hot, and yet your freezer stays frozen. Truly, this is a song of ice and fire. Oh, I hate you. I hate you. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so, aside from that, I have continued to not play more of Final Fantasy XIV, not for a lack of desire to do so, but because I am not doing anything worthwhile, because I suck. I tell a lie. I said I've been productive. I actually got work done, and, you know, the, the writing and stuff that I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, has been happening. Nothing else has. Because I suck. Seriously, I could have sworn I did something. But it's just completely... I'm sure you did. Brain. Yeah. yeah, nope. Nope. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> did you watch anything? YouTube series, maybe? Uh, not really. Like, fucking. <clears throat> no. Nope. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, like, just. Uh, fucking, what's his name? Asmongold clips and stuff, and I am vaguely starting to get tired of his shit, just in general. It doesn't yeah. take long, honestly. Yeah. You can enjoy his stuff for just a little bit, and then it's like, oh, this guy's kind of an asshole. A little bit. I mean, he's... I'll say he's less of an asshole than he was. Uh, good character development. Good for you, my dude. Um, it's good progress. Uh, I, I don't begrudge someone continuing to kind of be an asshole. That would be wildly hypocritical of me. Um... <laughs> It's, I mean, I can't even really say he's an asshole. He makes a lot of good points. He just says them in, like, the worst way possible. Uh, I mean, 
I wouldn't even say that he says them in the worst way possible. I'd say that he just doesn't sugarcoat things. Yeah, like, that's fair. Like, he, he talked recently. Uh, I watched a video of him talking about uh, VTubers specifically because he played Holocule and he's like, oh, this is a new content farm for me, so I'm going to make videos on it. Uh, you know, like a streamer does. Um, yeah. Again, don't begrudge him it. That's his fucking job. It's what he does. Um, and he talked about why VTubers are basically just outperforming real live women as streamers. Just pretty fucking consistently. Um, and that it's broadly because appearance matters way more for women and that that sucks. Like, he's, he's very clear about how that sucks, but he's also clear about how that it sucking doesn't really change it. Um, your microphone's doing weird shit, by the way, slice off. I'm trying to find my phone, so my microphone is, like, re laying on my chest, so my shirt uh, is probably, like, swiping across it. Sorry. Uh, okay. Don't... Don't do that. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, oh. That was probably the main thing. Okay. Um, so, what was I talking about? Uh, You're talking about how uh, women appearances not fair. matter. Yeah. Uh, so, a woman's appearance matters way more than for a male streamer, and how just being a VTuber basically just shortcuts around that. Like, you, it, it no longer becomes a concern, so it's allowed to be far more about personality and, like, entertainment value rather than just how well they did their makeup and whether they're feeling great and smiling a lot and wearing whatever they're wearing. And, yeah. It, it was not inaccurate but people kind of don't want to hear it and I don't know I both respect and don't respect that I don't know I don't know how to feel about that like I, I can't fault someone for giving their honest opinion and I definitely can't fault it when they're actually kind of right um I don't know. It it feels really shitty to say such things don't need to be talked about because that sounds very wrong even to my own ears. Um, so it's it's a very weird circumstance where he's right and he's got a good point, and I don't want to hear it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that I feel like that just makes me a kind of shitty and dishonest person. Um, but that's kind of the point uh, of just hiding from uncomfortable truths. And I can kind of respect that. I don't respect th the audience that he has that kind of uses that as an excuse to be shitty. Like, that is a pretty consistent thing that I've noticed. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't... I've not seen that, but I also haven't interacted with this fan base or seen them interact with people. Every, every but, time I look at one of his yeah. clips, I notice that his uh, he has to constantly, like, snap at his own chat because they're being, like, toxic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's good at it, which I yeah. assume is from practice. Yeah, like that is another thing that, like, yeah, he is not afraid to call people out when they're being absolute pieces of shit, and he will happily do so, make an example of them, and then ban them. Uh, which, fair enough, that is as responses go. I can't fault that. On the other hand, it happens a lot, despite him doing that. Yeah. Yeah, he has to do that often. Most, I swear, most of the clips and videos of his I've seen, he's banned at least one person. Mm. So, yeah, it's... I don't know. And I, we, I talked about last week him being kind of disingenuous with how he actually plays video games. <laughs> uh, I mean... He has talked about that before as well, of how, like, his job is not to play video games well in the slightest. It is to entertain people or, you know, get the chat interacting and, you know, being 
engaged with them and whether that's positive or negative doesn't really matter all that much broadly speaking which might maybe quite possibly contribute to his community kind of being assholes but you know that's hmm i don't want to speculate <laughs> that sounds I, i'm totally speculating don't don't say bullshit like that casey what the fuck are you doing uh <laughs> like yeah I don't want to speculate, but I'm going to speculate anyways. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, if, if if I'm respecting his honesty, then I should be as on, on, endeavor to be as honest as that, at least. Um, and not be disingenuous piece of shit of saying, like, hey, I, I don't... <laughs> I don't mean to judge you, but here's how I'm judging you. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, yeah. So... It's it's a it's a weird thing, like it's respect, but shut the fuck up, <laughs> kind of thing is 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 where I kind of land on it, and it's weird and very tiring at times. Uh huh. But maybe because that's I have to put the work in to actually listen to what he's saying and think. Okay, he's actually making a really good point here, and I agree with it, and it's a good analogy, and he's making his point very well, and I can understand uh, where he's coming from, and I respect that. And then the inverse of what the fuck is he talking about, he is completely uninformed and might not even be talking about the thing that he's reacting to. It's just on a complete different tangent, and just... This is very stupid and off topic and has nothing to do with the thing that he's supposedly lecturing people on. Uh, yeah, there's been a couple times where it's been the opposite, actually. He's been over informed. I think he was talking about some of the dark, the Elden Ring balancing. And he, he was, he's just good at games. Like, mm. he's talented. So his, or at least, at least that series. He's, so, he's very invested in, like, <laughs> The amount of times I've seen him rant about World of Warcraft's systems and endless systems upon systems upon systems, that, from what I can tell, is what he's really, really good at. Is he just picks that sort of shit apart. Um, so Elden Ring and Souls Likes, that sort of thing, absolutely up his street. That is kind of a lot of that game. Um, so yeah, his uh, his argument in that instance, which I forget what exactly it was, but it was it was so far removed from the average player, but he kept insisting that it was the average opinion. It was hmm. a little disconnected. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. His ongoing war with uh, Blizzard is entertaining enough, so I will probably continue to watch videos about that at the very least. Uh, a lot of other things, maybe not so much. Uh, <laughs> that's fair it, it it is very interesting to me for the for me to see like uh he can't play at the top level anymore so his opinion doesn't matter and he's like yeah but 99 percent of your players can't play at the top level either so don't i kind of represent a lot of your player base that is not being catered to with this high level content that none of them can do kind of thing it's hmm like i say sometimes he has a point <laughs> uh yeah mm -hmm. so i'm gonna stop talking about asman gold now because he is a very <sighs> he's a person that very much like sort of draws conversation let's call it that it's very easy to have an opinion on him in general. Uh, mm -hmm. It's what happens when people uh, say what they mean, I guess, for, for good or bad. Um, Strong opinions always draw contention. Yeah. Which, again, it's his job. Moving on. Uh, yeah. I have seen... An undercurrent of unease about Final Fantasy XIV from long-term players. 
Uh, how do you How's mean? So? Uh, people complaining that the content isn't there. It, it's kind of funny. Um, because it's coming from people who came from WoW. Uh, and they're complaining that, hey, all this top-end raid content is... I'm kind of done with it. And so what else can I do now? You're not really catering to me. Why aren't you catering to the 1% of players that have done everything? <laughs> oh, you know what you can do now? Yeah. You can cancel your sub and wait. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. And it's that's funny it's because a year or two years like... ago, they were like saying, it's so great that uh, if, if you've done all the content, you can just stop playing for a while and wait for the next patch. And now they're like, yeah. why isn't there any more content? I want more content. <laughs> yeah. No, they we're getting another patch in like a month. Like next month is the next patch. That's going to be a whole bunch of new extra stuff with it. But like, my gosh, there's so much to do in the game as is. If you're just there for the high raid, like high, like high difficulty content, um, and you're already done with it, you can just stop playing. It's fine. Mm -hmm. The, 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 the devs encourage you hey if you don't want to play you don't feel like playing you can come back whenever you want cancel your sub it's okay <laughs> yeah. so you know I... what, what I'm what I my understanding is you have a lot of these wild WoW players who joined in when Endwalker came out and they had the big launch of a new big expansion they had the they had to go through ARR they had to go through Heaven's Ward they had to go through Stormblood they had to go through uh, Shadowbringers, Shadowbringers and then Endwalker that was just coming out and then oh wait that all came out right when uh, for one COVID was just easing up and two Final Fantasy 16 was ramping up development hugely, which meant a lot of the top uh, staff were less than present for Final Fantasy 14. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, the content that came after that, not as much, not as uh, not as enthralling, I guess, as uh, yeah. as stuff that came before. But these people had all of the stuff that came before to do. <laughs> So when they mm -hmm. ran out, well, yeah, it's like catching up to a manga that, you know, it's 300 chapters and now you have to read it weekly. Tough shit. <laughs> like, it takes time. Yeah, we're in the... Um, so, uh, to kind of explain, um, Final Fantasy XIV works uh, where they'll do, like, a large patch, like a point one, a point two, a point three, point four, point five. Yeah. And they'll do like uh, small minor patches like every other week, uh, like a 1.1, 1.2, you know, 1.3, 1. 1.5. 1. Uh, hmm. And um, the last one is always like the 5.5. You get to 5.5 and then that's it. Your whole thing now is you can either like do the little events that come around. You can do some old content, but you're waiting for that next expansion. Yeah. And, and, the, and right. the next one is 0. 0.5, is my understanding. The next one is 0. 0.5, yes. And we're waiting for Dawn Trail, which comes out next year. Which comes out summer next year, yes. Yeah. There's going to be a dry period. There already is sort of a dry period. We're reaching the end of things, as it were. Yeah. Um, almost, almost like there was an expansion named for that, but, you know. Yes. It's the, it, like, they've added in so many different things, but for, like, specifically people who only do like high difficulty content um it's not wow yeah the, like there's so many other things that you can do in the game that's not just high difficulty like ultimates or savages um which the latest savage tier was pretty well liked from my understanding after the last two were not so great mm. um but <laughs> What do you expect? <laughs> we're at this point. Yeah. Uh, when we're like between expansions. Well, they're at this point and it's the first time they've ever been at this point. So mm -hmm. You can understand this where they're a... coming from. It's it's a frustration I've felt as well, like I say, with like manga when you have to read weekly and yeah. suddenly the story slows down so much that it's hard to enjoy it the same way anymore. It's I it's a similar that. thing with, with me because this is uh I, I joined right when um 
like Shadowbringers was out before Endwalker. Yep. And um, I didn't have to wait long for Endwalker because I was already pretty late into Shadowbringers um, when I joined in. Because I'd previously played before, back a long time ago, but when I actually started playing for realsies, it was Shadowbringer. Yeah, I was and... going to say, that was weird, because you, you, were, you were already talking about it long before I started playing. And, uh, I, I had originally... Shadowbringers. Yeah, that was Shadowbringers. I actually had a made an account years prior to that, where, back when only, like, Heaven Heavensward was out. Ooh. And I... Basically, uh, you know that thing that you were talking about, where, like, Oh, uh, no, ew, social, hmm. interacting with people. Yep. That hit me hard. Yeah. And the friends that I wanted to play with, like, were never online. Mm. So I was like, uh, I'm just going to not do this. And I've had to gradually sort of overcome that, like, fear of, ew, no social strangers <laughs> to the point where I can actually... <laughs> enjoy like, the content. Run, yeah. yeah, enjoy the content. And, like, what I found is that people just know their job you just go like type of like a slash uh oh and like a slash just like a little hey and then you just run the dungeon and then you just say hey good job that's it mm -hmm. and if, you don't even just say good job you just say thank you for party and that's it that's the that's the entire social like etiquette that you need it's like hello and then thanks for the party so minimal interaction pretty nice and unless you're doing raids and then it's like oh, oh. yeah and if you're in raids um everybody shuts up while somebody calls out mechanics and you do the mechanics that's how that works hmm. and that's how you're able to get say organized there's it's, it's not like a constant cross of communication um it is either you're shutting up and you're and you're like communicating or um You've already done this fight like twenty times, and you're just kind of talking casually about random things as your brain just autopilots it because you're so well practiced. Hmm. Um, but yeah, this is the longest like dry period that I've had to actually get to experience. So what I've been able to do is start catching up on all the things that I was so far behind on that all my friends had already done. You know. Hmm. Gotta get that like island, I'm love. Gotta get that island sanctuary built up. Oh uh, yeah, no, I had lagged behind on it. Um, I'm getting I'm almost rank fourteen on that. Like they made it up to rank sixteen now. Rank fourteen, you get a bunch of steampunk stuff, like that's, a whole steampunk outfit and a steampunk otter minion. That's a that's a big crafting thing, right? Uh, no, island no. sanctuary has oh. nothing to do with crafting. Oh. Um, oh. Um, in that you don't need to have a crafter class to do it, but you can still craft things. Okay. Um, if that makes sense. Uh, the tribe quests are where you go for a lot of the, the big crafting arcs. Um, like the, um, the Shadowbringers Dwarf Tribe quest has an entire arc about you building a tank together. And then when you complete that uh, series, you then get a tank mount that can fire a cannon. And it's great. <sighs> So what you're telling me is the best things in the game are for me. <laughs> so what you're telling me right now. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I'm leveling a crafter just so I can get that tank, yes. Mm. <laughs> uh, but there's, there's all sorts of like cool extra side content in here that's not just like, oh yes, I'm going to memorize this like 20 minute long fight and perfect it. And now I got my cool shiny weapon. Know what now? It's like, well, uh, you take a break. Oh. Go play something else. Get your best in slot gear, I guess, if you really want to do that. But, uh, you know. It's it's not really worth the hassle. It's just more something to do. Mm. Like, it sets you up for the next expansion very well, so you don't need to get gear for, like, until at least halfway through the expansion. Mm. So it's a bit of a head start. Otherwise, though, uh, it's nothing to really, like, stress about. Yeah. Just play the video game. And if there's nothing you want to do while playing the video game, then stop playing the video game and do something else. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> it's... it's, it's I, I bet that's a strange message for, like, the WoW refugees to receive. But it's like, yeah, no. 
You yeah. can stop. It's okay. Like, it, it's a thing they liked in concept, but they never really considered the implication of, no, you can stop then if if you're not got nothing to do and you're not having fun and stop and it's like that sounded relieving until they actually got to the point where they want to do that and it's like no I, I'm an addict <laughs> yeah then they just don't get what they want yeah and they complain it's, about it's, it for months <laughs> it's I'm, I'm, it's I'm, an, that's not fair it's not been months it's been like weeks but you know there's an endless content farm here but it's not all like savages and ultimates you know, you could do an entire stream where you just work on setting up your house. That, that That's the type of game this is. That, that does sound kind of nice. Oh, the, the housing people are, are nuts. Import, like, important question. This whole island sanctuary bollocks, you can just put, like, all, all the crafting stuff there, right? You can just have like merchants that have like crafting stuff there, and you don't have to. Um, what do you mean? I don't know what I'm talking about, so I'm gonna just sort of put a pin in that until I actually know what I'm talking about in terms of this stage of content, I guess. Okay, because mm. uh, for like high level crafters, a lot of your materials that you're going to be using for crafting, you're gonna either have to gather them. Or make them yourself, um, yeah. or alternatively buy them off the market board. So yeah, you know that's that's kind of there, there's no merchant they could put there that would aid you very much. Yeah, because yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Because like it's it's the the early stuff you can just buy it, and I'm kind of forced to buy it, or I was when I was stuck in Gridania. Because you know there is one gatherer class, and it has nothing to do with. Uh, say leather working or whatever um so yeah that was that was my understanding of crafting classes at that point is like hey you kind of need the merchant there to be able to buy materials like metal and shit uh but that stops yeah, being no. a problem as soon as you actually get the mining and such you get like like you get the the leather stuff where you like you you go kill monsters they drop their leather then you um turn that into something or you go mine and then you use your blacksmith to then uh turn your ore that you got your raw ore and process it into an ingot and then turn that into a piece of like armor or weapon hmm. and then you're like it's it's interesting yeah. that they never had like a a hunting gathering class I mean, you're an adventurer. You're yeah, already the hunter. So you're going to be killing a lot of things, but it, it was an interesting decision and probably a correct decision to just not have that as a thing and just say, yeah, you're just picking shit up anyway. That's just how mm -hmm. that works. Yep. So all that's just fantastic. Uh, and I have been, you know, enjoying the all this game I, I feel like other people need to slow the roll and just you know enjoy what is still here because there's still a lot of there's too much content in this game mm -hmm. let me be real here yeah i mean that is the thing though of like a, a lot of people that are complaining about this are streamers and uh that means they yeah. have been basically playing this game professionally for two years so. yeah and congratulations you're caught up uh go play a different game or mm. play a different part of the game. Yeah. <sighs> oh well. Oh well. I like this game. Yeah. It is a neat game. I've been I've been spamming the PvP to get PvP achievements and special mounts and stuff. The PvP that no one cares about. Have they improved that at all? Like from last I watched videos about it it was like two years ago so i don't know whether that's still accurate of like no one caring about pvp uh they did improve it significantly um compared to two years ago uh they redid all of the classes in their pvp forms um and retooled how they work uh they added a whole um extra mode called crystalline conflict which is only five minutes long instead of the like 20 minutes long front line 
and um, is easily spammable, and it's just quick, like, 4v4, um, just moving the tower or the crystal across to the other side. Um, and then, yeah, no, they, they have retooled it. PvP is good now. Oh, cool. Uh, some people I know would not agree with that sense statement because <laughs> they get really salty. But, but those are people that would probably have problems with VPP regardless. Yeah, I enjoy it. Hmm. Okay. I want to ask about the gold sources stuff. Do they are they still adding stuff to that? Um. In terms of, okay, so presently what they are doing is they're adding a whole big expansion, next expansion, <laughs> of a new whole mode and game and stuff to the Gold Saucer. That's oh getting God. huge updates. Uh, next X-Pack. Uh, so yes, they are continuing to update it. Oh my God. It's, it's really bad <laughs> that the... the... The content that most enthralls me in Final Fantasy XIV is the fucking crafting system and the gambling system. <laughs> Have you tried the card game system? No. I, I, like, like I say, I just, I'm just barely coming out of the tutorial, not even finished it, so no, of course I haven't. Because oh. that's, that's an entire other hole. Um, <laughs> they, have, they have the card games, they have tournaments, they have an entire entire mahjong game in there with its own tournament and its own community built around it um do, do they have gold's... a quest option where you can just say i don't know how to play mahjong okay you can spend like three hundred thousand guild to just skip it <laughs> I, it's completely optional you don't have to do it at all yeah and you don't uh, have to do but... anything at all but the thing is, is, is the stuff tied to things uh, just a few titles yeah. If you want those, Mahjong Conqueror. <laughs> that's, yeah. Okay, hold on. That's Actually, a common gonna... title that people will wear. <laughs> okay, so you, you joke, but um, let me just give me a second. Give me a second. This is Ron um... Lord. I think that's that's a hand in Mahjong. Is Ron? I think. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let me see. Um, okay, here we go. Let's look at the Mahjong achievements. You ready? Oh Christ. Go for <laughs> it. That, all right. So Th This <clears throat> is where my week went, people. This is what we're doing because I couldn't think of anything to talk about. We're talking right. about Mahjong in Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> so um, the title, the series of achievements is called Tile and Error. Oh, my fucking um, God. God. <laughs> <laughs> the titles you get are Mahjong Enthusiast mm. and then Mahjong Master. Those okay. are the two titles tied to it. That's it. Can I can I just say how much I appreciate how front facing a lot of the main people are in Final Fantasy fourteen, the people behind it. So mm -hmm. like there's Yoshi P and everyone worships him and Sokan and people worship him too. But like I feel like from my experience Every time I see a stupid Pono reference for a quest or whatever, I just think, oh, fuck's sake, fucking Koji, god damn it, what are you doing? Every single time, like, not without incident. Okay, thanks, I needed the Equilibrium reference for this house buying quest. <laughs> If you want, if you are a big fan of the uh, of the Yu-Gi-Oh series and win a hundred uh, tournament matches in the card game, you get Duelist as a title. Mm. The card game is Triple Triad, right? Yep, Triple Triad. Yeah, I thought it was. It is a is a it is a a deep pit that um that i was so terrified of that i did not unlock triple triad until after i had already beaten endwalker <laughs> which meant i missed out on a lot of cards because you get them from fighting bosses so what you're saying is i need to get into cards i mean if you want to <sighs> 
It's a collectible just, card game, my dude. I want to get into that. <laughs> uh, there's t- there's titles and, and and stuff associated with it. Um, the irony of me saying that for how much I kind of hate Magic the Gathering is kind of funny. But I feel like a lot of people are coming around to my way of thinking on it. <laughs> on MTG. Just like, yeah, no, fuck you. Stop releasing new cards every three weeks. Get all the get all cards numbered one through three hundred twelve. You get jack of all cards as a title. <laughs> that, but caught okay. Yeah, I feel like you phoned that one in, Koji. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these are um, eh, eh. But the game rewards you for basically whatever you want to do. So yeah. play the game. Do what you want. Yeah, I'm still a if you want. Band. Yeah, no, those are great. You never know. Just one day you're you're walking through uh, Ulda, and then you hear somebody playing Megalovania in the distance. <laughs> Is it like an actual like? Uh, do you have to input like the notes as a? Th- thing or is it just yes uh you oh. can you you put the you you literally put in the uh notes but people use programs to um essentially create macros uh macros with the notes and then they can just like play the song automatically hmm. oh, okay so i think that's enough final fantasy 14 took okay. <laughs> we're going up for a bit a little bit Right. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, that's all I can say about the game. So, how easy is so, it to get into chocobo racing? <laughs> uh, I'm scared of it. Yeah, it basically looks like the fucking Chow Garden is what it looks like. It requires a lot of breeding of chocobo to do it. I, mm. I've never tried it. It's the one of the modes I've not touched. But once you get your chocobo, you can dye it any color you want by feeding it until it pukes. Uh. <laughs> I, I joke, but um, you have to you have to feed it a specific combination of food to change its color. There's a calculator for it. I can show you it later. So that's enough Final Fantasy fourteen for real this time. <laughs> uh, it's, uh... So you say you're joking, I don't believe you. Um, <laughs> yeah. I still so, have to get started out on dinner, so if that could be yeah. serious, that'd be good. Yeah. P- Patreon, zero. Thousand. Yes, thank you to our patrons for uh, donating us and supporting us through the previous month. Thank you to Ryu Hitsia, thank you to Sailor Pass Thunderbird, thank you to Vale, Greek Guy, Ethan F., The Crossbrain, and Troper37. You all are awesome. Yay. We, we did it on time this time. Yeah. Aha. Hell yeah. Woo. Okay. Uh, so that was that was an episode that I contributed very little to. Just ranted about some <laughs> fucking streamer for like 15 minutes. And then Saints Row for another 15 minutes. Yeah. It was... Didn't exactly bring the thunder to this episode. But if you want to support shit, garbage content like this, you, there's Patreon. There's a Discord link in the description if you want to yell at me for being a loser. Um, thanks, thanks for listening, I guess. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>